welcome back students welcome to biology classes today we are going to see 11 science biology and we are going to resume the chapter 18 that is body fluids and circulation today we will see about the topic that is cardiac cycle so to begin with all the four chambers are in relaxed state and it is called joint diastole right so when we are starting with the cardiac cycle right all the four chambers are in the relaxed Stay. So when all the four chambers are relaxed in nature, at that time, this state is known as joint diastole, right? And uh, two things you have to remember is systole and diastole. Diastole, that is the relaxation phase, and systole is the contraction phase, okay? So as the bicuspid and tricuspid valves are open, blood from pulmonary vein and vena cava flows to left and right ventricle respectively. So as you can see that the bicuspid valve which is present on the left side and tricuspid valve on the right side, right? The two of them as they open, what happens is the blood from the pulmonary vein and vena cava flows to left and right ventricle. That is pulmonary vein opens into the bicuspid valve, right? Or we can say uh, the by, the, into the uh, left ventricle, right? And the tricuspid valve opens into the right ventricle, right? So the two of them, when they open, right? With the help of where from where the blood from the pulmonary veins and the vena cava flows into the ventricle, right? So with the help of this valves, it is going to do what? The prevention of the backward flow of the blood. There is also presence of semilunar valves which get closed at this stage. So when at this stage, that is the joint diastole stage, all the both the semilunar valves get closed. SA node generates action potential that contracts both the atria and that is the atrial systole. So the SA node, right, this SA node, it is going to generate an action potential and due to this action potential, it generates some uh, potential for this reason what happens is the contraction of both the atrium takes place right and when the contraction of the atrium takes place that state is known as atrial systole or we can simply say as systole but as here the atria atrium is getting contracted for this reason it is known as atrial systole now, the action potential passes to AV node. So first, the first action potential is generated into the SA node. And after that, that particular action potential passes or we can say it passes to the AV node and the bundle of his, right? So the uh, particular action potential, it passes from the SA node to the AV node. And after that, the bundle of his is responsible for transmitting it to the ventricular musculature to cause the ventricular systole. So once the first contraction of the atrium is taking place, so what happens is the assay node generates the action potential and further it can do the contraction of the atrium. And after that, this assay node sends the action potential to the AV node. So when the AV node receives the action potential, it uh, the bundle of his is responsible for transmitting this poten action potential to the ventricular muscles. And due to the uh, po action potential, which is reaching to the ventricular muscles, it is going to cause the contraction of the ventricles. And this stage is known as ventricular systole, right? So this is the, when the atrium gets contracted, that is known as atrial systole. And when the ventricles uh, are contracted at that stage, it is known as ventricular systole. Now, at the same time, atria undergoes relaxation diastole to close the bicuspid and tricuspid valve, right? So here what happens is when the ventricles are contracted at that time, the atria are relaxed are in relaxed state so when the ventricles are in the systole or we can say the ventricular systole is when 
occurring or taking place right at that time the atriums are going to be in the diastole state that is the relaxation stage so at the same time not all the pores are going to be contracted so once if the ventricles are contracted then the atrium will be relaxed and when the atrium are getting contracted at that time the ventricles will be in the relaxed state right so what happens when the ventricular systole is taking place at that time that both the atrium they undergo the relaxation state and this is going to close the both the valve which is present in between the atrium and the ventricle and that is the bicuspid valve and the tricuspid valve semilunar valves open into the circulatory system that relaxes the ventricle and close the valves to prevent the backward flow of blood right so the with the help of the semilunar valves right when the atrium are undergoing the relaxation state at that time the semilunar valves opens into the circulatory system and this is going to do what the relaxation of ventricles so again the particular atrium they are going to do what the contraction and side by side the pressure on the ventricles it decreases and due to that what happens is the ventricles are coming into the relaxed state so with the help of the semilunar valves the blood comes into the or it opens into the circulatory system and the ventricles are relaxed and the valves are being closed in order to prevent the backward flow of the blood next is now as the pressure inside the ventricle decreases the bicuspid and tricuspid valve open to repeat the process of cardiac cycle right so as the pressure inside ventricle decreases that means when the ventricle when the pressure inside the ventricle when decreases at that time what happens both the valves get open and the process and the whole process is continued right so Uh, how it is going to take place that is at one time any uh, like any two chambers are in the relax mode and the other two are in the uh, we can say the contraction mode right so as the pressure inside the ventricle as decreases right so at that time what happens is again the both the valves get open that is bicuspid and tricuspid valve and again the whole process is repeated or we can say this cycle is repeated and as the cardiac and as it is known as cardiac cycle now during each cardiac cycle two sounds are produced right so this is one of the very important point which you need to know is that two types of sounds are produced when one cardiac cycle is completed so during one cardiac cycle two types of sounds are produced right so the first sound is lub right so uh, if you check your pulse right so you are going to feel two types of sounds which you can um, with the help of the stethoscope the doctors also listen to this uh, lub dub sounds right so the first sound is the lub and the second sound is the dub right so the first sound is due to the closure of the bicuspid and tricuspid valve so first when the bicuspid and tricuspid valve is when closing itself at that time the first sound comes and that is lub and the second heart sound that is dub it is due to the closure of semilunar valve as we have seen that this all the valves are not closing at a single time right or they are not simultaneously closing uh, in between right so what happens is at one time bicuspid and tricuspid valve gets open like closed right and on the on the other side at that time semilunar valve is open and when the semilunar valve is getting closed at that time bicuspid and tricuspid valve gets open so the first sound is due to the closure of the bicuspid and tricuspid valve and the second sound is due to the closure of the semilunar valve right so this is the two sounds of the cardiac cycle and that is lub dub right now we are going to see about the next topic and that is ecg that is simply known as electrocardiograph right so this is a graphical representation of electrical activity 
of heart during the cardiac cycle so if a person is having any of the disorder related to the beating of the heart then the ecg is been carried out that is the electrocardiograph is been carried out and this is going to give you the data in the form of graphical representation right so the graphical representation shows the electrical activity of the heart that is what kind of electrical activity is uh, taking place during the cardiac cycle that is been noted in the form of graphical presentation right so the electrocardiograph machine is used to obtain electrocardiogram right so this uh, electrocardiograph machine is been used to obtain the electrocardiogram the patient is connected to three electrical leads to wrist and left ankle so both the wrist are being uh, are connected with the uh, this particular machine right so there are three leads right so this three of the electrical leads out of this three two are uh, connected with the patient's wrist and one is connected with the left ankle right so three this three uh, electrical leads are being connected and there are there is five different types of waves which are produced and it uh, uh, like it uh, represents different different stages of the cardiac cycle right so as you can see this figure is p q r s t right so this is the whole cardiac one cardiac cycle wave right so this p wave represents the electrical excitation of atria that is depolarization which leads to contraction of atria so the p wave shows the contraction of the atrium right so that is the electrical excitation of atria so here when the p wave is there so this p wave shows what the contraction of the atriums the q r and s as you can see here a peak is there right so that initiates that shows that this q r s is going to show what the initiation of the ventricular contraction right so this is going to initiate the uh, ventricular contraction so at this time what is going to be happen the ventricles are going to be contracted after that the t this is the t that is this t wave it going it is going to represent the return of ventricle from excited to normal state so that is repolar repolarization right so the t wave represents the return of the ventricle so when the contraction of the ventricles took place over here in the qrs after that contraction when it comes back to its normal stage right or we can normal state right that is going to be represented by the t wave and the end of the t wave marks the end of systole so you can see over here this is the end of the systole right so this is all about the pqrst waves right counting counting the number of qrs complex in given period of time determine the heartbeat rate so with the help of this qrs right this qrs number or we can say the qrs complex how many times you are getting right the number of qrs complex in a given time period is going to determine that to how much amount of heart beat rate is there so if you want to check that what is the pulse rate of your own cells then you need to count what this qrs rate right so this is all about today's topic and that is the cardiac cycle right now next is the double circulation right so double circulation uh, as i told you when i told you about the mechanism of the circulation right so the flow of same blood twice through the heart once in once in oxygenated form and other in deoxygenated form is called double circulation so i said as i said that one uh, like the same blood it flows twice into the heart one way that is in the oxygenated form and the second way that is in the deoxygenated form so as the same blood flows through the heart twice for this reason this type of circulation is known as double circulation 
Now this double circulation, it includes two types of circulation. First is the systematic and second is the pulmonary, right? So we are going to see the systematic circulation first. So systematic circulation includes flow of oxygenated blood from the left ventricle to all body parts of body and deoxygenated blood from various body parts to the right atrium. So side by side this runs, right? If we see the right side, then all the body parts, which is going to have the deoxygenated blood, it is going to be brought and it is going to open into the right atrium. Side by side in the second side, that is on the left side, from the lungs, the oxygenated blood is going to be poured into the left atrium, right? So, and from the left atrium, it goes to left ventricle and from left ventricle with the help of the aorta it is going to be sent to all the body parts now all systematic circulation starts from aorta and ends at superior vena cava inferior vena cava or coronary sinus to right atrium so all the systematic circulation right it starts from the aorta that is the main artery and always it ends at the veins that is the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava or the coronary sinus. This three of them, they are going to be open into the right atrium. So it starts from the aorta and ends to the right atrium, right? So the systematic circulation provides oxygen, nutrients and other substances to the tissues and take CO2 and other harmful substances away from remote. So with the help of this systematic circulation, it is going to provide you oxygen. Along with the oxygen, even it is going to give you several substances along with the nutrients, right, to the tissues. And it is going to take whatever CO2 which has been produced in the tissue and it is going to bring all the harmful substances for removing it right so here when we are talking you can see over here this is the figure right so well, uh, you starting with this right so as you can see over here from all the body parts right the deoxygenated blood right it has been opened into the right atrium right so in the right atrium whatever has been uh, taken right so whatever is brought that is all the deoxygenated blood from that it passes to the right ventricle with the help of the uh, main that is the pulmonary artery right so with the help of this pulmonary artery it goes to the lungs as you can see from this purple this goes to the lungs and in the lungs the exchange of gases takes place where the deoxygenated blood gets converted to oxygenated blood. So now the blood is oxygenated in nature. So it is again coming back to the heart on the left side with the help of a vein, which is known as pulmonary vein. So the blood from the lungs as where I'm showing the cursor, this blood, the, de the oxygenated blood from the lungs goes back to the heart on the left atrium or we can say on the left side in the left atrium with the help of a vein which is known as pulmonary vein now from the left atrium it goes to the left ventricle and with the help of this aorta that is the dorsal aorta which is the main artery it has been sent to the all the body parts right so this is about the systematic circulation, right? Next is the pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary circulation, pulmonary word is being used in relation with the uh, lungs, right? So the flow of deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs and the return of oxygenated blood from the lung to left atrium is called pulmonary circulation. So here you can see the blood from the right side, uh, the right ventricle, when it goes to the lungs, right, this well, with the help of pulmonary artery and the oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left side or we can say the left atrium of the heart on the left side with the help of pulmonary vein, that is what the pulmonary circulation, right? So 
the exchange of the or the flow of the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs and the return of the oxygenated blood from the lung to the left atrium that is called the pulmonary circulation now two pulmonary veins from each lung transports the oxygenated blood to the left atrium so here you can see that is two pulmonary veins are responsible for passing the oxygenated blood to the left atrium and here double circulation prevents the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood so as you know that double circulation takes place that is the heart the chain the four out of four chambers the two chambers is responsible for carrying only the deoxygenated blood and other two are responsible for carrying only the oxygenated blood so as there is a uh, double circulation is pre present and for this reason it prevents the mixing of this two different types of blood so this is about the pulmonary circulation right i hope you are very clear with today's topic and i hope to see you again thank you